my friends, it's here, the Emily Awards 2022. I'm so excited to be here rounding up the best products of the entire year. We go video by video, so face categories, eye categories, lips, and a finale. So it's a four-part series. I hope you'll make sure you are subscribed, that you've got your notifications on, and you are ready to go for this. I will be updating also on my social media when a new video goes up. But these are probably some of my most anticipated videos of the year, both from my audience and also for me to do. Um, there's something that take a lot of thought because I go category by category of makeup giving the best drugstore and high-end luxury option out of the things that I have tried. So I hope it's really informative for you. I have every single product listed and linked below. So let's say the only thing you're looking for is a great concealer. You can see it listed below. You can click the link to go to it. And then with most things, I will have an additional link where you can go to a video where that product is applied or involved in a more in-depth review for extra info. If you're familiar with the Emily Awards, you may have thought, hey, did I miss the funny intro? Where's the intro? Okay, we're doing something a little different this year. I will have a special guest in each of my videos introducing the different product categories. So they'll be popping in all throughout the video. I hope you enjoy that. I think it's going to be kind of funny and fun, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, let's take a sip of coffee. We've got a lot to get through. Now here are the winners for best primer. For drugstore, I actually have two different winners. I try not to do this um, in the Emily Awards. I try to really narrow it down to one, but there are some situations where that just can't be done. My first favorite is the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. This stuff really got on the scene this year, even though it has been around and available for years prior. It's kind of interesting how I think TikTok and just different complexion trends have really taken off this year. People are looking for those glowy primer options, and I have loved these and I'm holding up two because I equally like the light glow as much as the deep glow. Deep glow just gives me a little more of a bronze tint to my skin but they're great applied under makeup because they don't affect your skin texture too much. They don't add a boatload of moisture and the shimmer never looks fake but they're capable of adding a little something extra to the foundation that you put on top. You could also use these as mixers, um, mix them into some kind of moisturizer or slightly dilute the intensity of a foundation a bit by adding some of this. I've loved them so much and they've been some of my most used primers for sure. A totally different kind of primer that I think you should know about is the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer and it's the one that says 12 hour makeup grip. Hard Candy really makes a lot of different primers, super wide variety and this would be the one that they make that's probably trying to be like the Milk Makeup Grip Primer but compared to any gripping primer I've tried this one goes on the smoothest. It doesn't feel as sticky but I swear it does make an impact on both hydration and the staying power of makeup. So on really like serious staying power days, this is definitely something I'm wanting to reach for and I think I'm about out of this tube, but I would highly recommend it. Now for high end, I know this one won last year as well, but it's just a really special primer and it's doing things in a way that no other primer's doing them. It's the Laura Geller Spackle Mattify Primer. And you might be a little shocked at a person with normal to dry skin saying, oh, I'd recommend the Mattify. But this really is a nourishing feeling primer on the skin, but it does a real number on pores, okay? So when I've paired this with either a Laura Geller baked powder foundation or any other foundation that I want to use, there's a definite smoothing component to this, but I love the fact that it can do that without feeling too dry on your skin, which is oftentimes what you have to accept if you want something that's really pore filling. It's just not that hydrating. This one manages to be good for even a normal to dry skin type, but does that initial perfecting step on the skin that I really appreciate. So I've absolutely loved this. I'll definitely be linking to the video below where I pair this with a certain Laura Geller powder foundation that just makes the skin look completely flawless. I love it. Um, next up, best BB and CC cream. Got it! All right, so our BB and CC cream category here. So also we could think of this as maybe tinted moisturizer. There's kind of a big range in what things in this product category can do. I've got two pretty different ones in my drugstore and my high-end picks. My drugstore pick is a really natural looking one on the skin. This has won before. It's been talked about all year long. It's the Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator from Wet n Wild, which I wear in the shade Light. It's a beautiful product on the skin. It has hyaluronic acid and squalane. It's oil-free. Um, they say sheer to medium coverage. Um, yeah, I would say that's 
fairly accurate. It's just barely touching medium coverage, but overall it's a light product on the skin. Gives you a little bit of moisture. For my skin type, I wouldn't wear this alone and say, oh, I can forego moisturizer and only use this. I definitely still put on my moisturizer and all my skincare, but this gives me a lighter look and an overall beautiful radiance on the skin. It's the type of thing where if you're envisioning a light makeup day, you could put on this and only this and be like, wow, my skin looks really healthy, really refreshed by using this product. So I've loved it so much. It actually has good staying power on me as well, which has been surprising. But Wet n Wild, I mean, they've slayed it on a number of complexion products. And it doesn't totally surprise me that this comes out on top for yet another year for the best drugstore BB or CC cream. Now for high end, we've got something that continues to dominate. I mean, I, for good reason, I believe. It's the It Cosmetics CC cream in just the traditional version. And I have liked and been able to enjoy some of their other options like the Illumination or the Nude Glow or the Matte. They've got a lot of great specialized formulas, but this one, I gotta say, it is impressive in the coverage department. It does offer moisture. It's throwing in an SPF 50 and it wears really well on me all day long. So it's one of those products I really feel I can count on. It's doing a lot of different things in one. Again, I mean, could I skip moisturizer and use this? Maybe I could, but I wouldn't probably want to, especially if you're in the normal to dry category, wear some moisturizer underneath. But this is doing so many things well, it's hard for me to overlook this and look at all the other like lightweight tinted moisturizer BBCC products out there and say, this one isn't truly like the one I'd want to reach for when it counts. Okay, so I love that. Oh, oh uh, here are the best foundations, light to medium coverage. Heavy coverage need not apply. So the best foundation category, we have uh, given it a little split this year. I thought let's do a light to medium category and a medium to full category. This light to medium category, this has been a huge year for drugstore on complexion products, I think in general, but for foundation in particular, drugstore is just nailing it. I really feel every one of any age and skin type can go into the drugstore and find a foundation that will work for them. And in this light to medium category, I would say everything I mentioned is probably verging more on medium. There are just so many options. My number one in this category is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus, the matte option here. I wear this in soft beige. It's got that uh, spatula applicator here. And some of you might have expected this to be classified as a more full coverage option. I don't think it's completely full. I think it's on the very strong end of medium though. I certainly wouldn't call it light, but it's more the stronger end of medium. And given the way things are shaking out this year, I would have to categorize it in this space here for light to medium, but it looks beautiful on the skin, amazing staying power. I have come to love this over the past couple of years, and I feel like it's just really taken off. People have been really impressed by this foundation across the board. It stays, it looks so much more flawless than you might imagine, and it also comes in a dewy version. I feel like the dewy version is slightly less coverage than the matte, but both are really high quality products. So I wanted to put that out there, and if we're talking skin types and the way my three picks. Yes, I have three drugstore picks, no high-end picks in this category. It's just such a drugstore dominated category right now. If I had to pick a skin type for this that might be ideal, I would say combo. Now, what if you're more of a dry skin type? This one has come back for me in a huge way and it's been on the market for a long time, but Neutrogena Healthy Skin. Guys, there's not a time that I put this on that I'm not totally floored by the overall radiance and then by day's end, the way it looks on my skin after a full day of wear. What Neutrogena could do better is expand their shade range here and really like sink their teeth into this line all over again and give it a little reboot, but keep the formula because the formula is so good. I wear shade 30 buff. Maybe put a pump on this as well. That would be a nice update too, but it really is, I think, the kind of foundation a lot of people are looking for these days. Something on the drugstore level for those who like the look of a Kosas Revealer type of foundation, let's say, really makes the skin look incredible, but offers a little more moisture than this guy does. And then finally, just a pick for anyone here. And this is the one I'm wearing today on top of my Lumi Glotion in the light glow, but the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. It's been a huge year for this one. When you read the name, you're thinking, okay, a tinted serum, is this just gonna be like a watery, moisturizing thing that I put on my skin? No, it actually has some really good, strong medium coverage, blended out all over the skin. <laughs> like, I just think it looks way more flawless than you might imagine. 
imagine. It blends in with total ease. The dropper could be better, but the product inside is really what counts, and it has staying power, and it's just a little more matte than I ever expected it to be. When it was brand new to me, I was kind of shocked by how it wasn't just this dewy, watery mess. It was something that really packed a punch coverage-wise, could last on my skin all day, and layered up on top of a glowy primer looking just incredible. So I've loved that. I think any skin type could probably pull this one off, but this is especially for normal to dry, and this one especially for combo to oily. I know that's weird that I named three drugstore favorites and no high-end favorites in this category, but I've always said I'm not going to just name something for the sake of naming it. If I don't feel strongly about it, it's not going to get into this video, and I couldn't narrow it down between those three. I've been rolling those around in my head for like a couple weeks now, wondering which would come to the top. I, I thought, let's just mention them all because we're all different skin types. Oh, uh, now the uh, winners of the best medium to full coverage foundations. It's the horse. Medium to full coverage. We do have a drugstore and a high-end pick here. This drugstore pick has really swooped in at the tail end, but I think it's special and amazing and looks downright awesome on the skin. It's the CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear Light Airbrush Finish Foundation, which I wear in natural beige. This looks amazing on the skin. For those of you who like a full coverage look, something that's really going to blank out all imperfections. Uh, perhaps we could even call it concealer optional skin. I This has been lurking in the drugstore for a while and it's amazing. On this channel we've just nicknamed it the Red Cap Foundation. Okay, so this is a range you want to look into. There's a good concealer in this line and a good powder foundation also in this line. And did somebody also tell me there's a primer too? <laughs> so worth knowing about, worth looking into if you want maximum coverage from the drugstore. But yet, it doesn't look too heavy. It does have that light airbrush finish that they say. It has a lightness on the skin that's kind of hard to explain. It blends out beautifully with a beauty blender. Oh, application-wise with any of the other ones I mentioned in the last category, I would say brush or beauty blender. Here I would definitely say beauty blender is my favorite. Now for high end, I'm going to give this to one of the most indestructible foundations I own and some of the fullest coverage I've ever tried. It's NARS Soft Matte. Um, this one one, guys like I just I love this foundation I wear it in Patagonia medium 1.2 it is like the foundation. This has been used by me for going on a couple years now. It's been sweat tested. I think in the original video where I reviewed it, it was probably like July, I think, uh, July or August, and we were outside and I like took it through a day where I had sweat dripping down my face and it lasted. I mean, you can count on this. There's a little bit more of a thickness to it, but that's part of what plays into the coverage. I would say you're gonna give yourself your best look overall on the skin when your skin is really well prepped underneath. So like that goes for everything here, but let's make sure we're well moisturized, not only on the overall face, but the under eye area too. And then let's blend these fuller coverage things in with a beauty blender or similar sponge that's going to be able to really work the product into the skin and make it look its most natural while still being completely full coverage. Love this stuff. It's not the last time you're gonna hear me saying soft matte in this video. I just spilled my coffee straight down my front going too hard in this video. I'm just pouring the coffee down. The now best concealer. The concealer category, you guys. I do have a drugstore and a high-end pick. <laughs> the drugstore pick has one in the past. In fact, it was the winner last year, and I just think it's a very advanced formula for the price tag, for the $6 price tag, e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I like all the camo concealers, just the regular version is great too, but there's something about this hydrating one that makes it seem even more valuable, I guess, to have, because as someone who is 38 years old, like I have an aging <laughs> under eye area that can use the extra moisture, this still manages to have amazing coverage. My e.l.f. Camo Concealers are the standard that I compare all other concealers to. You know, I'm thinking is it more or less coverage than e.l.f. Camo Concealer? Because for the price and what you get, how can you beat this? How can you? And if you're like, well, I've never been able to wait, make it work for me. One thing I'll caution you on, this stuff is potent. If you're drawing a big line that goes from the inner part of your eye all the way down here and you're swiping back and forth a few times, in my opinion, you've done way too much. We're talking dots. Dot, dot, and maybe dot, okay? 
that's it. And I, the same goes for the regular version of this stuff. And then blend it in with a small like kind of buffing brush or beauty blender works great with this. And I've just been so impressed. And even though I've got a basket, literally a basket full of concealers I like, it's really, really hard to top this stuff. So Light Peach is my shade, FYI. And your shades, the frustrating thing about the camo concealer line is you might be one shade in the regular camo concealer, but it does not directly translate to the same shade in the hydrating formula. So you just kind of got to reshade match yourself, but it's worth it. I love this stuff. Now for high end, I'm picking a really special one of a kind kind of concealer in my collection. And I thought long and hard because I, you know I love the Smashbox and Becca under eye corrector. The brightener comes in multiple shades. Really does amazing work for brightening up your under eye and providing a little hydration to it. But for some reason, I couldn't let go of the thought of my NARS soft matte and the fact that this is so special. This is a soft matte concealer that does not have the heavy dry down of other matte concealers on the skin. Like it still maintains a feeling of moisture. I've got this on my under eye area today and I mean flawlessness, okay? I would say setting it is completely optional because it, you put it on and it just looks so nice. Light 2.5 creme brulee, that's going to be my shade here. I love the feel. The feel is so smooth. I swear every time I put it on my under eye, I think, is that a little bit cooling? And you know I love that. Doing that full coverage work without looking too heavy and not having that absolute dry down that a lot of mattifying concealers coming out of a tube with a doe foot applicator will give you. Like, I think this is special stuff and there's honestly not one thing that I own that is like this. Highly recommend that. And get this soft matte range. It's been on the market for some time now, but still when it comes to full coverage matte looks, that stuff reigns supreme. Next up, best pressed powder. It delights me to say that the best drugstore option is also one of the cheapest. It's Rimmel Stay Matte. And I used to always use the shade called Sandstorm, but I've upped that to the color Creamy Natural, just a little lighter because I feel like when I want to use this on the under eye or the T-zone, it just brightens me a little bit more. And usually when I'm using a little powder, that might be the only place I use it. So it makes sense to grab something that's not just a skin tone match, but something that can up me brightness a little bit. Now one of the special things about Rimmel Stay Matte is that it's a true powder, okay? It's not powder foundation. It's not going to be one of those where your brush dips in and oh my gosh I've just picked up so much stuff and it's just going on really thick. This is a true pressed powder. If you put a puff into this, you like your little triangle puffs, right? Put a puff in or put a brush in, you'll never pick up too much. It's a very firmly pressed powder but it does the job. It gives you just enough and for those of us who still have a normal to dry skin type but can like the look of a matte full coverage vibe. Anybody else out there guilty of overdoing it sometimes? Yes, we overdo it sometimes. This really paces you, okay? One brush stroke into it, put it on, and you're like, yeah, I look matte. I look a little more even. I look slightly more covered, but you don't have to keep going back again and again. It paces the process and you get just enough and I just, I've loved that. And probably the cheapest powder money can buy at Walmart. Now for my high-end picks for pressed powder, um, I've got one that's going to be more like a setting powder and one that is a literal powder foundation. So my setting powder pick, this came into my life this year and I've been so impressed by it, so pleasantly surprised by how much I like this. This is the Kosas Cloud Set. I wear the shade Breezy, and I think there's just one shade lighter than this as well. These are hard to come by, y'all. In the last Sephora sale, I thought maybe I want to try the lighter shade, but I couldn't get it. Um, it's a baked type of powder. I've really worked down my dome a little bit here, but this is the powder that kind of made me fall in love with setting my makeup at the end again. So like getting completely done with a look, going into it with a little brush, and then like going over this area. I sometimes call this the seam between under eye and blush and hitting that zone and feeling so much more perfected for using this. This can also straight up set your under eye. This could be the only powder you use for the day after you've put on concealer and you just go around and set things. A special thing about this is how it doesn't look thick. It really has a blurring capability that I appreciate so much. And just that last little step can be what completely elevates your look. So I've definitely been a believer in this. I know it's been a popular thing and I think it is worth the hype. Now my other favorite here, like I said, it's a powder foundation. 
and this one last year also. This is the thing I talked about pairing so well with that Spackle Mattify Primer, and it's Laura Geller's Baked Double Take Powder Foundation. Probably not as well known, I wear this in medium, not as well known as her Baked Balance and Brighten that's all swirled, but that's classified as more of a light to medium coverage, and this is said to be medium to full. Oh, you talk about a velvety powder. I mean, it really does cover. It's basically an eraser of pores. I like using this with um, actually the Laura Geller Angled Retractable Kabuki Brush. That's a nice option. Or any other kind of thick, dense brush. I could see me using this with the e.l.f. Duo Complexion Brush as well. By the way, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, Em, you know, I know you like the Beauty Blender, but what about a brush? Man, this has got to be like MVP status for handling darn near any foundation and also concealer. Um, but you could use this with a powder foundation and be really happy with the buff that you get. I will link to an application video for this, but I would just say when you're using powder foundation and you're going over top of some concealer, some creamy concealer you've put on, make sure you're kind of pressing in, patting in on those areas where concealer has been applied, and then you can buff in on the other spots of your face where you're not going over concealer because you don't want to disrupt that product that's underneath. Next up, best loose powder. All right, loose powder has become a really hot category for me because of the discovery of these little triangle puffs that work so, so well. And it's made me fall in love with loose powders I didn't even think I liked before because the very deliberate pressing of them into the skin has enhanced staying power, made me look more flawless, and just so much happier with the look. So I've got a pick for drugstore and for high end. My drugstore pick is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Loose Setting Powder. Even though I've tried several different drugstore loose powders, I love this one still. There's something about this powder, and I think a lot of people would agree with me on this. Not only is it just translucent powder, but it has this slight ability to perfect the skin even more when you put it on. You can dab it on with a small brush, like a Real Techniques setting brush, or like this Morphe under eye bullet brush, or use one of those triangle puffs. And I tell you, just pat that up on your under eye area, guys, and you can look so flawless there. And I tell you what, for the amount that I've used this powder, look how much is still sitting around in there. Wet n Wild has done some very good quality, very important products to the makeup routine. The BBCC category, the foundation category, and now loose powder. I mean, you can completely be content with a full face of Wet n Wild, 100%. And what's interesting to me was I remember when Wet n Wild had their renaissance like years back, probably 10 or so years ago, when they kind of revamped their eyeshadows. And that was what took everyone back to Wet n Wild and said, oh, this isn't just some cheap crappy line. They're really doing the most pigmented eyeshadow in the drugstore. And now I feel like they've kind of brought everybody back again to their line because their complexion products are just so darn good. But yeah, love that loose powder. And then my high-end pick. Man, are there some good high-end powders, some raved about high-end loose powders. But this Laura Mercier, the new version. This is not the rose powder, but this is the um, translucent loose setting powder ultra blur. This is their talc free powder. This is so good. Um, I keep going back to this. I've really loved it using it with this application. This is what I'm wearing on my under eye area today. And I do feel it gives added perfection to the skin while looking even lighter than the original Laura Mercier powder. So yeah, even though that powder is iconic, the OG Laura Mercier setting powder that everyone loves, I would lose it in favor of this if I could only keep one of them because I just, I feel like it's a little lighter, just a little less visible on the skin. And then that blurry component is real. I've really enjoyed this. If you don't want to spend high-end money, get the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. It's also an exceptional powder. I think this just has an added level of lightness that I do appreciate and I really like it. That's why it's a winner. Next up, best powder bronzer or contour. For bronzer, y'all, um, my drugstore pick, another moment where we get to pat Rimmel on the back and say, hey, thanks for giving us something that's just a few bucks and it's still amazing. The Rimmel Natural Bronzer in the shade Sun Bronze. I put this up against your L'Oreal $12 bronzer any day of the week. This stuff is such a perfect tone, benefit hula vibes. I mean, I can wear it and get my skin tone stepped up a notch. I can contour a little bit with it. It's plenty pigmented enough. This range comes in multiple shades, but Sun Bronze is my personal 
personal favorite, and I just don't know why nobody else is talking about this. It's a spectacular product, absolutely spectacular. And drugstore prices, I've addressed this in other videos, but new things come out, the price is sky high. L'Oreal puts out a little bronzer, and you're gonna pay over $10 for that stuff? Like, you don't have to. There's stuff that exists, it works just as well. It does the same function, okay? So be on the lookout for that. My favorite high-end bronzer, she's a past winner. She is impeccable. It's the Laura Geller Bronze and Brighton, which I wear in just the regular medium shade. Um, this is a swirled, beautiful mix of bronzy, browny tones, beiges, even some brightening pinks. This bronzer has the capability of going kind of dark on me, but I love it. I find it easy to blend. I think the swirled nature of it just kind of takes some of that darkness down a notch and makes it pretty easy to work with. But if you've never worked with a Laura Geller baked powder, like her baked powder foundation, it slays. But her blushes, her bronzers, when they talk about how they do baked, you know, it starts as a cream and then it gets baked into this formula on a terracotta tile. And there's an intensity and a staying power that I think you'll be really, really impressed with if you try something like this. So I'm a longtime fan of that. And it will last you so long. You're getting this baked, domed up, pan of powder. You can use it regularly and you'll maybe just work down to even after a while and be like, how long will I have this? Next up, best cream bronzer or contour. Now this year, given the massive popularity of cream products, I felt we needed a separate category for cream, bronzer, and contour. And um, there's one from the drugstore here. It's just been a random little find for me, but it truly is so easy to use. So lightweight on the skin. I feel like I could hand it off to anybody, whether they're um, a makeup guru who's used everything or just a makeup beginner who is not even very familiar with products and application, and anybody could make this work. It's the Milani Liquid Contour. Um, it's from the Conceal and Perfect line, and it's the shade 2 Ginger, so there are other options here. I don't love the way my cap gets a little goopy because of this little foam fuzzy tip, but guys, when I say easy to blend, this is easy to blend. So you just dab a little around your hairline, dab a little in the hollow of the cheek, maybe come down here, sculpt out the jawline a little bit. Um, you just graze your blending brush over this. I love a Sephora 56, but again, something like an e.l.f. Complexion Duo brush could handle the blending super easily too. And it's just so light and it doesn't cling into the skin too hard. You have time to blend it out. It's an amazing liquid contour product. Don't be running to Charlotte Tilbury contour ones. Just get this one. Now for high end, this entire line from M Cosmetics called So Soft. They make both blushes and contour sticks. In the high-end cream contour ball game, these are always the standard that I come back to. How many times this year have I put on a cream contour and said, well, it's good, but it's not quite as soft as the M Cosmetics So Soft Sticks. I've really been getting into both of my shades, too. For a while, it was only Terra, oh, rain alert, it was only Terra that I wanted to use, and I've used it down so much. Got to twist it up. Um, it's a great, cool, kind of medium contour tone. And I mean, it slides on your skin like butter and you just move your brush around in the general placement of where you put that in, it's blended. I mean, it doesn't get easier. I mean, the Milani is easy in the sense that it's liquid and you would expect it to be just very light and blendable. Not all liquids are, but you might expect it more out of something like that. And sticks, we think maybe a little more thickness, a little more drag. Zero drag, easiest blend. So, oh, I was gonna show you, this is Terra, so it's a little bit cooler. And then summer is just a slight bit warmer than that, but both entirely wearable by me on my skin and kind of a similar intensity level for each. Just one's got a little more warmth and one's a little cooler. Tara's probably the ultimate pick for me, but wow, their blush sticks are great as well. Something else has beat those out in the cream blush category this year. But if you want great quality sticks, exceptional quality creams, go there. Next up best powder blush. We're getting into blush now, best powder blushes. Um, okay, last year, the e.l.f. duos won, the e.l.f. Bite Size Face duos, and it was recently brought to my attention that those are becoming rather hard to find now. Ulta doesn't even carry them on their website. A friend told me this. She showed me her amazing, like, pan that she hit on these products. I'm like, oh my gosh. You know what's really just like that, only it gives you an additional blush option? 
CoverGirl instant cheekbones. These need to win. These need to be known about, like these are something where, hello world, why are you not trying these out? Sophisticated Sable is great. Just an amazing neutral kind of option. And um, you've got this brilliant highlight and these were out before highlight was cool, okay? It's smooth, it's brightening, it's pigmented. You'll love it. You will absolutely love it, I promise you. So that's Sophisticated Sable. You could grab any shade of this. I've also got Refined Rose here, so more of a pinky option. There's a plum and there's peach. Get them and enjoy the fact that you're getting highlight, but you're also getting two tones of blush that can be worked with, blended out on your skin. They're easy, they're fun, and yeah, if you're having a hard time finding your Elf Bite Size Duos, these are a phenomenal option. I can always find them at Walmart. Now, for high-end, I was really impressed this year with what Benefit came out with when they put out a number of new boxed blushes. They could not be cuter. Cuteness-wise, like, off the charts. I did a specific video ranking, like, my top five. Um, spoiler alert, Tara's one of them. I love this one. You can get this in the little Benefit Cheek the Male trio along with Hula Bronzer and Cookie Highlight, but this is a special color. I love that they went rich with a lot of these, okay? That gives you range. If you get a rich blush, you can apply that more full on or you can apply it sheer. You can have a number of looks in between. And this one has this like satiny finish, kind of brick earthy tone to it. Plus you got a little teeny tiny goat on the packaging back there. Love it. And then Moon looks dark as heck, but I swear to you, like, let's just throw some I'm on right now. Get a little bit on my e.l.f. blush brush here. Look what a tiny amount of that does. Rich. Winter time. Yes. Oh, I love it. And I love the smell, too. Nothing smells like Benefit blush. I want to put that in a wallflower scent and plug that in and have that going throughout my house. I love, I love these. These are just a couple of the best, but there are many other shades you may fall in love with in this line. Willa's a great one too. Um, Krista is a beautiful, vibrant coral. Benefit knows how to do blushes, and I just love that they threw out a ton of different options this year. I've been talking so long, my throat is actually getting a little sore. There's so much to say. Next up, this cream blush. Cream blushes, y'all. Um, profusion. Profusion. We're coming back to this. I think these came up in a blush dupes video this past year. These are amazing. These blush hour liquid blushes. And they are the closest thing you're going to get at a drugstore price to a rare beauty blush. The one I'm wearing today, so I've had this on before I went layering other stuff on. I had this shade on called Cosmo. So packaging wise, you're going to shake them up. You hear it shaking. They've got this little like kind of puffy tip. You could put some out on your hand hand and then dab into that with your Sephora 56 and then go on to the cheeks if you want to. They're thin, ultra thin, liquid. There are multiple shades that match up directly to different Rare Beauty colors that I have, so I'll definitely link below to the video where that's specifically covered, but this is something not to be overlooked. And Profusion, you'll find it on the Profusion website or in certain Walmart stores or Walmart's website. And then for high-end cream blush, I've got to give it up to the Persona Multi-Sticks. It was tight for me between those and the M Cosmetics sticks, but the reason why I'm reaching for my Persona ones more is for these vibrant, perfect colors, um, especially the shades Kiss and Jam. So it's a berry with jam. I used that in a recent video, and you know, it can become the centerpiece of your look. Lip and cheek, easy, monochromatic, harmonious makeup look. And then I also devoted a whole look to using Kiss and making that kind of the centerpiece of the face. They also have Bubble, which is a soft, cool pink, and they have Teddy, which is more of a neutral shade. Not to knock those, those are nice, but I love the intensity of these, and I think it's what makes me just think about this line and smile and think these are so pleasant to use. Easy to blend, maybe not quite as easy to blend across the skin as an M Cosmetics So Soft Stick. If you're looking for softer, more neutral options, you might look to that line of blush, but I just love the vibrant nature of these tones, and yeah, they, they have to win this year. They just have to. Next up, uh, best highlight. Um, as I try to figure out my ratio of breadstick to Nutella, they threw in a false bottom here. Um, and I didn't know it was there, so now I have not enough Nutella and too many breadsticks. 
Best highlight got one winner and it's drugstore. I have been all about this all year long. You probably know what it is. And it's another one of those, where are you guys at? Like who else is using this? Tell me someone else got this and loved this. The Lumi Glow Nude Highlighter Palette in the shade Moon Kissed. Okay, these highlighters, you will buy it at the store, you will get it home, you'll put your finger in it and you'll say, what? Did she really pick this? They feel dry. They feel dry and thin and like there's not much to them. But you go into this with a Real Techniques setting brush. Just get a little bit on, pop them on your cheeks, and the glow that you get, that brightening kind of glow that is free from any chunkiness and any like looking like too much, whatever. I'm gonna add a little bit. This is my favorite shade, but I can use them all. You can even use them as eyeshadows. But my favorite shade, just watch what happens right here. Look at the brightening, the absolute brightening without looking like a darn thing is on the surface of my skin by looking up close and like looking for particles of product. Get out of town. I mean, it hasn't been a secret. I've been talking about it all year. You know, it's glorious. I haven't tried the one that's probably called Sun Kissed because I can just tell those tones aren't going to be what these are. These are brightening. These are beautiful. And they're thin and light and you feel like you're adding no additional weight to your makeup look but just that brightening glow. Next up, the award for best setting spray. Let's talk setting sprays, my loves. Um, wet and Wild, again, how many things can you find that are Wet and Wild? Like even the Incognito Concealer, which did not win in this video, but is a great concealer. Like throw that in, you got an all Wet and Wild face. Wet and Wild, it's the Natural Finish Setting Spray, and they have other scents that are packaged this way. I think there's a rose, a cucumber, a coconut. Um, whatever you choose, I really think what's most special about this is that they're cheap, and they spray out with one of the most beautiful fans of mist that you're gonna find of any brand, high-end or drugstore. Wide, fine mist. Never large droplets left behind on the face. And really just does what you want a setting spray to do. Like you've put on some powders and you wanna look just a little more radiant. You want everything to look a little bit more one with the skin. Try it and tell me that's not the best sprayer they're selling and yet it is also one of the cheapest. And then when we're talking about needing something to last into the night, you've got a big event. Staying power is paramount. Get Urban Decay All Nighter. This is the summer solstice packaging that I'm still working through, but this stuff has proven itself time and time again. I'll never forget being at that Luke Combs concert, sweating my buns off, coming home feeling like my makeup looked exactly the same, and knowing I doused myself in this before I went. It does the job. It absolutely does. It truly works. Setting spray is not just a myth. Like, <laughs> this is a real thing, and it really does help your staying power. How could I forget? Best face palette. Friends, we made it to the final category. Okay, best face palette. Um, this is a two-time winner. This is a real under the radar gem, I feel like. It's from Ulta and it's their Baked Sculpt and Glow palette. If you want Laura Geller vibes, if you want Hourglass vibes, get this palette. Um, there used to be a shade called Tahitian Glow that I loved, and for whatever reason, they phased that one out, and Santorini Sun is the new hot pick. It's basically so much like Tahitian Glow, but you're getting more of a matte blush in here, which I don't mind at all, but you tell me that's not like an hourglass bronzer right there. This beautiful, impeccable highlight, this rosy, pigmented blush. I mean, the whole shebang is great, and you know how people love to double up stuff like this on the eyes? Easy eye look as well. Absolutely. The textures, like, they'll surprise you. Be like, what, Ulta? What are you doing here? This is the exact format that Laura Geller has done for her little uh, face discs as well, and Ulta just decided, okay, we'll do that too, and it really, that bronzer reminds me so much of ones I've tried from Hourglass also. So that's a complete and total hit, and then I've really had a rediscovered moment with my Cali Contour palette from Smashbox this year, and that is my high-end pick. It does come in two different shades, um, so there's a whole deeper option, but what you should know, if you like that little Smashbox contour trio that comes with literally this shade, this shade, and this shade, that's been reproduced in here, plus a couple of highlights and a blush. And you want to talk about multitasking, this can be the eyes too, for sure. But also, this powder, 
This is so special. My friend David is a fan of that little Smashbox Contour Trio as well. He's an NYC makeup artist, um, but that shade there can really provide some coverage and brightening if you want to use that to set your under eye. Use a little bit. A little goes a long way. These are very soft, but that looks beautiful setting the under eye. And that wraps up my first video of the Emily Awards for 2022. No doubt this is going to be my longest video. It just has the most categories. We've really had to expand to a few extra categories this year to cover everything with different foundation formulas and different uh, blush and bronzer formulas. And I hope it's been informative for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section. But hopefully um, everything that's listed in my info box can direct you to not only the products I've mentioned, but more info on them that I've shared throughout the year or even previous years. You know, I hope that all helps and I will see you guys again very soon for part two, which will be the eyes video. Thank you so much. I love you all and I will see you soon. Bye.